Hi everybody, welcome to our webinar today. Thanks for joining us. As you can see from the title, it's Autodesk InfraWorks. What is it and how can it help your business? I'm Alistair Challens, I'm the Marketing Manager at Excitec. And taking you through the bulk of the presentation today will be Greg Dixie, who's our application specialist. So we feel he's in a pretty good position to talk about InfraWorks. Just going to uh, take you through a slide before I hand over to Greg, just explaining about what Excitec do. We have there our slogan, slogan, design, build and manage better. What does this mean? Well, we offer a range of services, solutions and software across those spaces, essentially covering a whole project life cycle. And we believe with our added value consultancy and our knowledge in those spaces, we can help you do it better. We're the largest Autodesk partner in the UK, Platinum partner in fact, and as you can see from the logo, we are um, specialised in all those areas, civil infrastructure, especially applicable for today's presentation. We're also an authorised developer, certification centre and training centre. So what is our objective? Well, we aim to make sure that clients garner, garner a return on any investment they make in technology via the services we provide, particularly consultancy, training, software, IT and technical support. We are also regulated to high quality standards with the ISO 9001 as you can see there and the ticket accreditation since 1993, over 90 staff and we have national coverage throughout the UK. We train all over the UK with our sales and technical team also covering uh, the full remit as well. Our head office is in Enfield Middlesex which is where we're presenting the webinar from today and uh, I think I can now hand you over to Greg and he will take you through the rest of the webinar. Thank you. Hello, I'm Greg Dixie. I've uh, been working in uh, civil engineering before I came to Excite Tech and I've been here for about two and a half years now. First thing I'll do is I'll take you through roughly the rough agenda. Well, it's not a rough agenda, it is the agenda. The agenda of what we're going to go through. So we're going to look at what we do today, what we currently do, how it, how it affects us and then we're going to look at the challenges. We're then going to look at how can InfraWorks actually improve what we do. We're then going to look at conceptual design and context, shadow studies and view and camera points for architects. We're then going to look at master planning, GIS data and 3D visuals for planners. We're then going to look at tran transportation routes, cut and field and design refinement, re uh, refinement for uh, transportation engineers. We're then going to go through a common project workflow, how InfraWorks fits within this how it works with other software, best practice, the Autodesk software suite matrix and then we'll have a little Q&A at the end. We're then going to look through and we've got, so this is basically what do we do today. The first thing we do is we'd create a proposal or a tender. Lots of people do this lots of different ways, create proposals or tenders, but it usually involves a variety of packages and these variety of packages, certain people know certain ones and other people know them inside out, other people know them roughly and we have to take this through and to get everyone to a decent level where we can create these in a really nice, create these and they come out really well, involves a lot of different people usually, a lot of different skills and a lot of different software packages. We would then go through to pre preliminary design. Usually this starts in a 2D environment, so we'd start this out in a 2D environment and then take this through and we'd be in the drawing and everything. This could be an AutoCAD or something else. People are now slowly working towards more of a 3D environment, which is good. So we would do this and people are doing this in Revit, Civil 3D, things like that, even AutoCAD for certain 3D elements of design. But this would be a new design. We wouldn't be taking the proposal on the tender. It would be roughly based on it, but we wouldn't be taking the information from the proposal or the tender, then doing our preliminary design with it. We'll be just having a rough idea of what's going on with the proposal. We'll then take it into preliminary design, start again, basically. So we're almost starting from scratch doing our preliminary design before we then take it through to detailed design. So detailed design, again, this it's a lot more in 3D. A lot more people are doing their detailed design in 3D rather than their prelim. And then we're doing, this will be basically, again, we'll start from scratch almost again. So our preliminary design, we've got that. And we may use aspects of it, but not a lot of it will get taken through from detail to detailed designs where we can go and do that. We then end up with information duplication. 
So we would like to slim this down. We'd want to make it so we can take the information through project to project. The challenge of this would then be, basically, to create a proposal or a tender, we'd need a variety of skills. People need to know different software. They need to keep up with that. And that would be this. We also need a lot of training, a lot of different things. And that would come under software education and associated costs. And then, as I've been mentioning, not being able to link or transfer the existing information through the design would also cause more time, more costs, and it's just taking us a longer amount of time. What we can do then is use InfraWorks. We can import data from various sources. We can use Civil 3D, Revit, AutoCAD. There's a lot of different ones. We can even use un, uh, not Autodesk software, for example, uh, Bentley some Bentley software comes straight through and we can change this and as you can see a few pictures below we can actually create more of a 3D model based on these. Once we have that we can easily sketch conceptual designs. You'll see in a little bit I'm going to take you through a video and we can just sketch a road or we can sketch a different building and we can put that in to say this is what this could look like. We could sit there with the client and do this while they're going on. We don't have to do this in our own time. We could sit there take our laptop or something to the client and we can show that. We can also create various proposals. Various proposals would therefore, I can say, this is option A, this is option B. Again, I'll take you through that a little bit more later on. So the first thing is we can import data. I've got a little video here. And you can see the videos come up. So as you can see, there's a list of different types of uh, file we can import here. At the moment, we're going to import a Revit model. When we're importing a Revit model, as you can see, it takes this and it takes the Revit model and it simplifies it to keep the drawing small to make it so it's a nice dynamic environment where we can work quickly with that. We can then either place this when it comes through. You can see in the top right hand corner it's processing. Once it's done processing, we can configure this and we can place it on our model. We can place it on British National Grid, or we can place it on any point that we want to. And that's using that XYM. We can actually then just choose where to place it down. It, it, yeah, we can choose where to place it down, basically, if we're not entirely sure where we're going to place it. As you can see, on the left-hand side, it's coming through. And we can place that down wherever we want. It's easier usually with InfraWorks if you're just going to place it to actually place it anywhere and then move it into place afterwards. So this is what I'm doing here. I can select that using what's known as a gizmo. I can place it over here and I'll just drop it off. It places it down to level. I can then rotate it and see it in actual view of where I want it. So this is a primary school and I just want to see what is going on and what we're doing with that there. We can then, as I was saying, we can easily sketch concept designs. If I come in here, and again, another video, I'm going to build a road. We're going to look at, well, sketching a road up until that, that's a primary school. We're going to let's look at a sketching up to a primary school. As you can see, I've got this little fly out, and I've got different types of street, different types of road, which are coming through there. Once you've selected one, you can just click points along here and sketch your road. Once you've decided, it will go across, so mine's going across the river here. And once you've decided where you want it to go, you can actually then link it up to another road. And as you'll see in a second, it'll actually recreate, and it'll create a little junction there for us. So it'll create a junction there for us, which we can then obviously see it's a more realistic view of what's going on at that area. These are all customizable, so we can put different types of uh, road layouts on this. We could put street lights going down the road and all sorts of things like that. We can also do various proposals. So let's add two options. That first one I've just drawn is the new road. The second one will be joining up to an existing road and then coming off the existing road onto our and into our primary school. As you can see here, again, I'm just going to go through, choose another road, choose a different part of the estate to go from. Join it up, come around the edge, 
and you'll see eventually I join this up to an existing road. I could go through and I could sketch that existing road out as well, but as I've just got the image of it, I'm just going to draw it in, join the image to it, like so. I could then go from that existing road and I can go back to that primary school. Once I've gone to that primary school, I can then create two proposals. So I've got two different roads here at the moment, and I can decide which one I want for which proposal. Up here, you can see currently I'm in the master view. Your master view will show all your different proposals all on one. I'm then going to create an option A. I'm also going to create an option B. Once I have these two options created, I can then choose what roads I want on each one. So for option B, I'm going to want the two roads joining up to the existing road. So I'll delete the initial one that I drew. I can then swap this, go to option A, You'll see that the original road, which I've got rid of, comes back, and I can delete the other two. I can then switch between the two of them. If I was in a meeting with a client, I could switch between the two of them and say, OK, so this is option B. We've just looked at option A, and which one we can do. And it's a nice simple switch with a nice visuals attached to that. Using this, I can basically, I can, so using this, I can switch between my tenders really quickly and I only have to have one model. I don't have to have different models for this, I can just keep it all together and I can switch there when in a meeting with them, I can say, okay, so here we've got our two options, I can switch between that. They might come up with another option and say, oh, what about if we put a road round there? I could then sketch that out and say, okay, this is another option, we can look into that. We're then going to start looking at InfraWorks for Architects. We've got shadow studies, conceptual designs, and view and camera points. The top video is our shadow study. So if you look at this, you can see over here, I have an option which actually says sun and sky. With this zoomed in, I can choose the time, a date, I can set the time to whatever I want it to be and you can see as I move that around you'll see how the sun changes and how, how this affects the shadows. I can then in the same time change the date and decide what time, time of year it's going to be at that certain time. Again I can change the date then change the time and it will go through this. This can be shown to affect, so, so we had a stakeholder meeting because we show how we're going to affect them. We can have individuals and say, oh, I think that building is going to really affect my light or some, things like that. We can also then do something with wind and clouds. Using the wind and clouds, we can actually make it a more of a realist view. We can up the speed, make it look like time's tra traveling more quickly. We can also change the cloud cover, change the wind direction and just make this so it looks more realistic and we have it looking almost exactly how we want it to. Then again, we can change the time of year, and like I was saying, we can see with a lot of cloud, a little bit of cloud affecting the light, how it's going to affect everything, and we can show this straight to people individually. We can also so show the design in context. So this will just be looking around the model and you'll see how it looks from different places. Where are we going to be able to see this from? If we're in a taller building, you could move away and see how you're going to see it. We can also just look around and just show how this is actually going to look with extra roads. It can be Revit models in the middle of a thing. It can be any type of building. We can just show what it's going to look like from different views. With this, clients get a lot more of an idea of what it's actually going to be shown rather than just a 2D plan or just the model on its own we can actually show them exactly what we want to see they can see exactly what they need to know and just see exactly what it's going to look like when it's on site
We're then going to look at InfraWorks for planners. So as we were saying, we can do master planning, we can show GIS data and 3D visuals. GIS data can come from anywhere. If we can find GIS data, we might have it where with an OS map, or we might have something along those lines. We can actually bring in information. So have you, as you've seen, I've had buildings shown up on mine previously. This is how I brought the buildings in. So I had an SDF document with all my buildings on. This can be created in a variety of packages, and it could just be, these could, could just be AutoCAD 2D polylines. I can tell the 2D polylines, as long as they are set up in a coordinate system and I'm drawing them in the right place, I could use a map and draw over the top of them, or I can do different things like that. Once I have these 2D lines, something like Map 3D, Civil 3D, they can export to SHP files. We could then do exactly what I'm doing here. We don't even have to give them a level. I've just said that I want you to drape these on the surface. We've then got 3D, version, 3D buildings coming up on these surfaces. I can then look around my model, and if I want to put exact data heights, if you haven't got the data heights in them already, we can just create data heights, and we can also create something called a uh, we can create them so they look more realistic. Here we've got a few facades, and you can see that I can make put this onto a building to make it look a bit more realistic. Once I've done that, I can edit this building and make it taller. I could type a height in here if I wanted to, or I can just drag it up so it looks, re looks how I want it to look. I can then move on to the next one. And I can move through these and put these on. You can also apply these so they do it randomly. You don't have to do these individually. If you don't want it to look, if you just want it to randomly so these look like they've got, so they look more realistic when you're there, you can just apply these randomly and it will apply it to every single building which has come up and we can also add that. That's going to make it a more of a realistic model and then it will make it a bit more uh, interactive and a bit more realistic when we're showing these to people and looking through this. We could also there add buildings. We can add, remove buildings, draw our own buildings. Even if it's just the outline of a building, we can just draw that, put that into our InfraWorks model and show what it could look like. We've then got InfraWorks for transport engineering. In here, you could see, as we've been drawing that, we can do uh, transportation routes. Uh, we can draw different roads in, just sketch them out, see how they're going to look. We can then use standard race, standard based road designs, and we can also do cut and fill design requirements, refinements even, sorry. <laughs> I can send, I could basically draw out a, a route which I want to show, and I can then ask Civil 3, um, I ask InfraWorks to create the best cut and fill route for, through that route as a basis based on some standards. I can also export this, once I've done this route, I can actually export this to Civil 3D. As you look here, this is the original road with the primary school. I can export this as an IMX, and then I can just pick a region. This surface would be really, really big on a civil 3D scale. So if I want to work it on a smaller scale, I can just draw this polygon around the bit that I want, make it as small as I need or as big as I need. You can see there I'm getting the junction in. Getting this as big as I need, as small as I need. Put it into here and export it. Once I've done that, I can then open Civil 3D. Once I've got Civil 3D open, I can bring in that import, and it will bring in the surfaces. As you can see here, it's also brought in the river, showing me where the river is. I can delete that if I don't need it. I've then got different surfaces down here, and if you have the roads module, it will also bring in your centre alignments and things like that. From here, we can then convert this to make it a view, how we're going to use it. And we can then continue with our design. We can actually take this and then do a detailed design from there. This then is taking that same information, taking that same information and taking it through our, taking it through our design. We're like I said earlier, information duplication. We're not doing that now. We're taking the same information which we started with. We're then transferring that through our design and then using that in a more efficient manner. We've then got common project workflows. This is then using InfraWorks. So we could go and we could use InfraWorks to create one or more tenders. 
we can create different proposals on those tenders, we can take it to people and say this is actually what it will look like on site, this is what it will show, what it's going to look like on site. And InfraWorks, as you've seen, is a lot quicker, it's a lot easier to use than most other packages. We can take that through, we can then show it what it's going to look like, and we can even edit it on site. If we've got InfraWorks there in front of us, we can edit that on site. Once we've got a confirmed route, transportation route, whether it will be where your Revit model is going to go, once we've done that, we can then take that through into Civil 3D or Revit. You can take it through to a few different things. For example, Civil 3D, you can take the whole road, you can take that through, you can take, if you've got the roads module, you can take that through and view that exactly how we want to. It's going to have our center alignment, we can refine that, we can just do all the things that we do in Civil 3D. Or Revit, we can take through the topology through, so I've got the topology already there, so I can base it, my information on that. We can then say, say we've got that and people, people are going to come and go, okay, so I think that building, that's a really tall building, it's going to inf in affect my sunlight. You can prove to them it will or won't do that. You can then say the environmental impact, how is this, is it going to look horrible where it is? Am I going through a nice bit of land and then you can show people if it is going to work and how it's going to look when it's actually there. And then we can show stakeholders and clients what it's actually going to look like. When we go to these meetings, like I say, all right, we've done all our designs, we've done that. We take it to them and go, this is actually our finished product. We can then transfer it from Civil 3D. Once we've got it in Civil 3D, we can then transfer it back into InfraWorks. So once all this is done, we can say, OK, this is exactly what we've designed in Civil 3D or exactly what we've designed in Revit. And then we can take that in and show them exactly what it's going to look like. So we can take that through from prelim and we take it through the whole way through. We're actually updating the model, we're taking the design view, and this is just a more, I just find it a more efficient way of doing things. You've taken that one model, you've then worked it through, you've shown that to all the people you need to, and we can then take that through and then use it in the most efficient way we possibly can. InfraWorks then supports a lot of different uh, file types. A 3D model, for example, would say it would be things like 3ds Max. We've also got DAE files, DXF files, FBX, and OBJ files. We can take this, and almost everything we can design, design in exports to uh, AutoCAD 3D. So we can take an AutoCAD 3D model, even if it's not one of the softwares, software that is listed there. Almost everything exports to an Autodesk AutoCAD 3D DWG. We can then take that 3D model, whatever we've drawn it in, bring it straight into InfraWorks and it will look exactly how we want it to on our screen. As I was saying, Autodesk Civil 3D, we can take that drawing. If we've got our designed road, we've got our designed everything we need, our designed route, once we've taken that, we can then take it from Civil 3D into our model, showing them exactly what it's going to look like. Autodesk IMX is another one that we can use. Almost all Autodesk software export to IMX, so we can take it in as that. You've seen Revit. I've talked about how we can use a DGN model from Bentley. We've got City GML, IFC, Land XML, and you can read the rest. We've got point cloud data if we want to put point cloud data in there, raster data, so to get our images in. We can also use that certain uh, surveys and things like that come through as a raster image. SDF, SHB, you can see SQL Lite, server connection, and we can also use SketchUp. SketchUp is a really good one we've used in there, and we've taken that, and we've done that with bus stop models and all sorts of different things, and made it look really good within our model. You can then see that we can export to FBX and IMX on the right-hand side. IMX again, most Autodesk's uh, things import an IMX model, and FBX is a very commonly used one for the rest of it as well. We can then look at back best practice. Best practice for InfraWorks is the main thing we need to think about in this is accurate data. You don't want to start this and using inaccurate data and taking this around and then just making up things and putting things not in the right place. Them Accurate data, if you've got a good survey company or if you're taking this from OS mapping or if you're taking this from certain different types of ways, you want to make sure your data is accurate, it's in the right place. You then want to make sure you're managing the model correctly. In data sources, you can use that and you can make sure you're bringing it in correctly, putting everything in the right place, accurately portraying everything and using that correctly. You can also then use storyboards to portray your design. If you look here, I'm going to show you how you can create a storyboard.
So a storyboard is basically a video. Yeah, if you just want to create a video, rather than going on site with someone, you can say, okay, I want to show this exactly. You can add different images, different views between that. You can then link them together. And you can also even add things like sun studies on them. Once you've added all that, you can change all this. You can change the duration if you wanted. You can do a whole thing like that. And we can play the information through in a creative audio video. See on the right hand side, I'm just playing with the sun study stuff to so make sure the right time of year, make sure I want to show it at the time, start times and end times that I want to show it in. You can either drag this across or times it. You can then click play and it will show that video how it's going to come through. You can then export that as an AVI and send it to someone. You could even show it to make sure. So rather than doing things when you're there and then. So rather than showing clients there and then uh, with InfraWorks in front of you, you can actually make a video and say, OK, this is what it's going to look like. If you're more comfortable with that, rather than doing a live demo, you can make a video, make sure the video comes out right. You can also get more approval from different people. Is this what we wanted to show? We can add titles in there. We can add little flyouts in there. And we can do all sorts of different things showing using those storyboards. We then get to the bit that people are finding, starting to find a little bit complicated. There's two versions of InfraWorks. There's InfraWorks on its own, and then there's InfraWorks 360. First of all, I'm going to talk about InfraWorks. InfraWorks comes in Building Design Suite Ultimate and Infrastructure Design Suite Premium and Ultimate. It's known as a perpetual license, which means you own it forever. So once you've bought it once, you own that version. So if I buy the 2015 version of InfraWorks, I own the 2015 version of InfraWorks. And I can use that for 20 years if I wanted to. You can also rent this. You can rent it, the minimum is three months, I think. And you can rent it up to a yearly rate. So you can rent it year on year. That's just a normal license, like you'd license AutoCAD or you'd license Revit. You can just type in a serial number and it reg registers uh, and licenses it on your PC. Or you can use uh, a license server system and you can license it through that way. And that just works like any other product which Autodesk have in their suites, pretty much. We've then got InfraWorks 360. InfraWorks 360 has added benefits to it. You can collaborate with things. You can also use something called the Model Builder, which I'll explain in a bit. You've also got roadway design, bridge design, and drainage design. The roadway design I was talking about earlier, and you can take uh, transfer things like your alignments. You've also got a lot more control over your uh, road design model rather than just a sketch. It's actually starting to get in our design phase. We can then take it. We can uh, change the profile of our road. We can change the cut and fill refinement on our road in the roadway design. The bridge design, we can then take that and we can change what girders we're using. We can change whether it's steel or concrete. We can change a lot of things like that. Our drainage design, we can then put in different types of pipes, different types of manholes in, whether we want an outfall or not. And we can put all these different things based on the drainage design. Like I was saying, you've also got the added collaboration and something called the model builder. The difference between the licensing between InfraWorks and InfraWorks 360 is that InfraWorks 360, you always rent. You never own it. You never own it as such. You can never use it. If you only buy a one year rental, you can't use it in 10 years or even uh, one year and one day. This is known as a cloud service subscription because it's a cloud service. The other difference between this is you have to be on the Internet to use InfraWorks 360. It licenses by looking on the Internet. It look, you open InfraWorks 360, it then goes to the Internet and it goes, OK, you have a license for this and it comes back. It checks it every single time you log on.
When it comes to cost for these, can you just look through and we've got this and you can either talk to your account manager or your, um, or if you look on the Excitec website, it's on there. We also do, um, uh, InfraWorks 360 comes with advanced Autodesk support. If you need additional training related support, we can help you via our RSA scheme. And that's again, if you talk to our, if you look on our website or talk to your account manager, they'll talk you through that. I hope that's cleared it up a little bit for people. We've then got updates to InfraWorks 360. As I was saying, if you've used this before, there's something called the model builder. What the model builder is, I can draw a rectangle, a polygon, I can draw something like that, and it will come up and it will do 150 square kilometers, up to 150 square kilometers. And this is an area around anything. This used to just be in the United States. What happens is you can draw that, it will then bring in height information, not all the building heights, but it will bring in some building heights, it will bring in information, so you've got a base to work from there. You've got some topology, topography even, you've then got the roads are coming through, railways, you've got all different things like that. This has just come through, and recently it's just come through up and it said parts of, and it's just come out for the UK. This is based on open street map data, and then it's also using Bing Maps as your map on top. Drainage design has just come through as a full product. This is a recent update and it's just come through as a full product. It was just on trial and now it's actually a full product we can buy and use and it's supported. I've talked about the roadway design, they've recently updated this and the bridge module is quite new and that is again what I've been talking about. There's new features in the bridge module.